Yes, uh, my name is Wayne Maines. Um, I'm the father of Nicole Maines. My daughter is transgender, and uh, uh, we we've both been on a hell of a journey over the last 15 years. And um, Nicole was one of the first transgender um, children to openly go to school, and uh, also one of the first to be attacked by national hate groups and when we lived in maine and we we uh we fought back and it was a long and um emotional and stressful battle and uh we're on kind of on the other side of it for our family but there's so many families that aren't so i wanted to take dad's fishing and uh have them give them have a chance to meet somebody else that's been through what they've been through and to talk about our hopes and our fears and our dreams and Lucina Fisher was uh overheard us and she was we were just so lucky that that she did the she filmed it all and uh I just want the I want the nation to know that we we love our friends or we love our our children and uh, we have the same hopes and dreams and I like to hunt and fish and do a lot of things that people think that we don't like to do but they've never met a transgender person or a child or a family and and there's a lot of good people out there that just need to break bread with us or go fishing and uh, maybe realize we're not that scary you know well um i met dennis shepherd 15 16 years ago i did a talk with a uh, uh, police academy and Junie and Dennis were there and uh, you know they told their story and I, I was just starting to get through our family was living in hiding at the time in Maine and uh, I told our story and I said I feel so bad that I'm up here my kids my child's still alive you know Judy and Dennis lost Matthew and and funny enough, both Dennis and I are safety professionals. And he got up and he said, Wayne, you know, you need to harness what you're feeling and, and don't give up and continue to fight for what's right. And we've been friends ever since. We talk by email at least almost every day for the last 15 years. And then uh, I met um, Peter through a transgender camp, the first one in the nation. And he was at that camp and we bonded. And then I met Frank. I was, I was on the uh, HRC Parents Advisory, the first council. And the second generation of that, Frank and Rachel were on that. And we both live in Texas. So we got together and uh, we started fishing. Henry, his son, we take fishing. He's a young guy. And, and uh, I, I credit getting the film done to Frank and Rachel because they were on the commission and they they just kept my dream alive and uh, we got it done and the other dads I didn't know until we went fishing so it was it was it was it was a beautiful thing well it meant everything because you know like Peter would tell you that when he met me, he figured out he wasn't alone and he had somebody to talk to. Men aren't really good at talking about their feelings and different things. So the fact that we were able to, no bullshit, just, you know, I cry at a moment's notice now, you know, because, uh, you know, that battles, they're battles, they're wars, they're little wars. And you get your own version of post-traumatic stress. And it's nice to have somebody to talk to and uh so that was the most important thing the fishing thing was the backdrop and it got us there and we you know some of them have never been trout fishing they all caught fish and i didn't you know so i uh it was a combination of that it just a, a chance to bond and and uh tell their stories and ask questions and i've been doing it for almost 12 years people call me from all over the world and you know i i I try to, and moms call me and say, can you talk to my husband? And I'm not a professional counselor, you know, I'm just a dad who screwed up a lot. And, but I learned along the way, we, 
there were no college or counselors. There was barely doctors when we started our journey and, and uh, we all learned together. And, and I'm not a radical left wing hippie freak, you know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just a dad trying to raise his kids to adulthood safely. And that's what our challenge is. I, you know, they, we live in fear every day. And I still do, even though Nicole's a big shot in Hollywood now, but she's got her head up high and for other reasons. So uh, you just don't know who you're going to meet. And we've got to get the world to understand they're just people, you know, trying to trying to go to work and make a living and pay taxes, I hope. So Well, some of them just want to know, um, there are, there's all different journeys. There's so much in common, but there's also differences. But I just had a guy call me not, just two weeks ago, and he's got a, a, a trans child who wants to, to go back and be stealth in high school. And I said, it might work, but it, I doubt it, you know, uh, um, because there's just, it's so hard to keep that. And we did it both ways and neither one of them worked, but I said, you can, but you're not going to be able to do it in Texas. So I know um, two dozen families that have left Texas because it's not safe and they can't get the medical care they need, but they have the, just like I did, we had the wherewithal financially to do it. But what about the families that don't, you know, that are living on the edge of poverty or, just have an average job and, you know, you, you, and they give up their heritage, you know, it just breaks my heart that they're giving up their ranch or they're giving up their families and they're going. And, and that's, that's the kind of questions I get asked. And sometimes say, Wayne, how did you, sometimes they say, I feel like I've lost my son. You know, I so here's what I tell them. I said, you didn't lose a son you gained a beautiful daughter and quite frankly i tell him a story when i was in at walmart one time when the kids were 12 and we got out of the van and i went to grab jodison's hand and he looked at me like dead guys don't hold hands and i grabbed nicole's hand and we swung our arms into walmart and it hit me it was like a defining moment she's gonna hold my hand to the day i die he won't but she will and those are the kinds of things that you pick up and you have a happy, healthy, confident kid, at least a chance. And, and I said, you gotta, it's okay to grieve that. I went through it too, but you, you're going to learn to get over that and realize, man, you never had a son, you know, it's a little bit to wrap your head around. Right. Well, you know, all along, I, you know, I always loved my children and I tried to, to mask my uncomfortableness and, and I worry that maybe I didn't, but Nicole says she couldn't remember anything, but, you know, it took a almost death defying moment in my life to realize because I did something stupid that I, I know better to do because my head wasn't on straight and I was in the woods alone and, you know, I would have died there just by myself. They wouldn't even have known where I was. And, and uh, I sat down and I cried and I said, man, you've got to give this up. What are you afraid of? And I, I'm a, a poor kid that came from the other side of the tracks. And I had to admit to myself and to my wife that I was ashamed that my son wanted to be a girl. I was ashamed that my son was a girl. I knew it in my, in my heart. My mind just wasn't ready until I gave up and was able to vocalize that it was me, not her. It wasn't her problem, it was my problem. And now I try to tell men all over the world, if you want to be a leader, whether state, federal, whatever, or wherever, and you're making decisions about our kids, you better have conquered your own freaking weaknesses, you know? And until you that you do that, you shouldn't be a leader. And, and I'm a better leader now. I'm a better boss. I'm a better person. I'm a better husband. I'm a better, better father because I'm not afraid of any of that anymore. My, 
my last fear is public dancing. I got to fix that one. So that's about all I got left. And uh, and now that's it, man. You got every, everybody's got fears they haven't mastered, and they don't even remember they have them. But you know, get a counselor, do something. Yeah, uh, and it's not about you. It's about your kid. You got to fix yourself. You know. So yeah, that was. And after that, I testified, and I've been testifying ever since, you know. And I know I can reach people that some people can't because that's the community that I work in, so. Well, first, the people need to get the people. There's a lot of people that care and say, but they don't, they just don't care. They don't know enough to go vote right so uh for me because we were in court for five and a half years and and the law already existed but until you test the law it doesn't really work right and now there's four or five hundred bills against us all over the country there used to be 23 states now there's probably 33 that have and, and like where do you go where do you take your kid you know so We've got to wake up America and reach their hearts. And that's what I hope this film does, because that will open up their mind to listening. And it's about me and my the other dads and whoever else having hard discussions with people that just don't know us. And they say, and it really is that discussion. What are you afraid of? You know? And then once we can verbalize that, we have a chance to to fix it. And I don't care if they're, you know, physically conservative or want to believe in a strong military. I do, too. But socially, you, you need to give up a few things and let people live their lives and be who they need to be. Don't dictate to a parent what medical care their child can get or not. And uh, But until you talk to them, really talk to them, they're not going to change. And, and that's what I hope. I hope it's a movement. And, uh, you know, we're planning another trip where we hope to have 21 dads there. So we're working on that right now because everywhere we go, they go, both moms and dads say, when are you going fishing again? So maybe in a couple of years, there'll be 100. I don't know. But people that are leaders in their community or at their church or, you know, sport coaches and start to, to love our kids and support them, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, we do it together when we can. Uh, she's, of course, very proud, and she's uh, um, doing her own thing. She's working on her own memoir. She reads a chapter to me every once in a while. And it's just amazing. Both of my kids are good writers, and they both have been through hell, not just Nicole, Jonas, too, because he was a young boy when this was going on, and, and being with other boys in middle school, she was with her girlfriend. He, he had he had no support you know and uh, so they both do it when they can and she's very proud and you know we're going to go to west hollywood on december 7th for for an event and she's my date i called her that's what i'm doing i'm driving right now i'm in i'm in a state park right now and i'm driving all the way to california i'm fishing my way there to spend thanksgiving thanksgiving with her and then i'll stay until december and and we'll do that and you know, I'm so proud of my kids and my wife. Um, and that's, you know, this movie film is about the dads, but it's the moms that are really making us helping. It. The, that's the thing. It's the moms. Dads are raised differently and we don't jump right on board. Not many of us. I'm sure there are some that do, but, you know, we're raised in a different way and it's not a good thing, you know, and uh, maybe we can change the the macho persona that we try to present, which is really not that great, you know? Love your kids, you listen to your heart and open your mind. And that's, that's it, you know? Um, be safe but use your voice if you can. 
whether it's in writing by music or art or whatever, because my kids, you know, we won the highest discrimination case in the nation in 2014 when they were teenagers. And that proved to my kids that their voices matter. But you have to be safe first and then use your voice. I mean, you can still write music, a song or a story and use a, you know, a pen name or whatever, but get it out there, you know. If you have a safe space at school where you can do it, do that too. But safety first, and uh, because there's a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding, and there's a lot of hate out there that it just coming risen to the top. It just it just breaks my heart, you know.